invite you back to that text in Joshua, the fourth chapter. We read the first part earlier. I want to tag the second part to it of our sermonic experience on today. Go back to Joshua 4 from verse 19. It's time from verse 19. And it says, The people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month. And they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. Those twelve stones which they had taken out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal saying to the Israelites, wouldn't your children ask their parents in time to come, what do these stones mean? You shall let your children know that Israel crossed over the Jordan, the Jordan River, here on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you crossed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we crossed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, and so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Using this passage in Joshua 4, I want to share with you from this topic precious memory. Just a reminder. Precious memories. Just a reminder. Thank God for our ushers. Amen. Thank you for your, your service. My brothers and sisters, we really ought to be thankful for memories. Needless to say that in our genetic makeup, our DNA, if you will, that as we journey through this thing called life and we encounter relationships after relationships, as we live and experience the highs and lows that life has to offer in our internal storage capacity, if you will, subconsciously, we store up memories. Some memories are good memories. They make us laugh, keep a pleasant smiles on our face, and when we recall them, it sends us into a, a place of joy. Some memories are so good it calls the hymn writer to write these words, precious memories. How they linger, how they ever flood my soul. Well. Still in the stillness of midnight, precious, sacred scenes, they do unfold. But, but then, my brothers and sisters, there are some memories that make us cringe on the inside. Well, well. Some memories that tend to take us back through a world of emotions. And nevertheless, somewhere in our mind, when we, when we recall these memories, we can't help. Some of us can't help but get angry. But nevertheless, God gives us a mechanism to store up memories. And if we read the Bible story, the memories of remembering was essential to God's plan and his relationship with the children of Israel. A lot of the tasks that he had given the Israelites were, was that they simply remember. You remember Passover. He said, when you celebrate the Passover, remember this was the day that I came through Egypt, killing all, all the firstborns, and I skipped over your babies. Re remember. As a matter of fact, there were at least seven different feasts that had something to do with, with remembering what God had done in their lives, even even when they saw a rainbow, they would remember how God saved them from the flood. They carried around the Ark of the Covenant simply to remember 
the promise God had made to Abraham. God simply wanted them to remember. But not only did scripture suggest that, that the children of Israel remember, but, but there are some memorials instituted by Christ that, 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 that were instituted in order that we might remember what he did for us. And if I can think of one off the top of my head, I think on the first Sunday we come together and we sup at the communion table. We don't come for, for, for show. We don't come because everybody else is doing it. We don't come out of habit because grandma said do it. But the, the, the text says that when you come to, to the table, you do it in remembrance of me. Remembering that I died when I didn't have to die. Remembering that I gave my blood when I didn't have to give my blood. Remembering that on the third day when they went to the tomb, they, they found nobody there. You ought to remember what I've done in your life. All right. All right. And so in our text, we encounter the Israelites as they were preparing to cross over the Jordan River. God sends direction to Joshua that says at this moment, you are to reach into the Jordan River where the priests were standing and, and pull out stones. I want you to pull out 12 stones, 12 stones representing each tribe of Israel. There will be 12 stones representing a rite of passage, 12 stones representing the sacred and divine. These were 12 stones that represented a transition from wandering in the wilderness to now stability. There were to be 12 stones representing a memorial to God and not a memorial to man. These stones were evidence of something happening here. Stones of evidence that, did, that at this spot, God was here. Stones of evidence that at this place, people and God interconnected at the river. To everybody else, these were just stones that were piled up. To everybody else, it seems, might have seemed like a waste of time. But, but, but to the children of Israel, these stones, were a reminder of something. The text indicates that one day as they were going back, as their children were going back to visit the river, maybe they were going to play, swim, or drink. They were going to ask, what do these stones mean? He says, tell them this. This is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord God dried up the river right before their eyes. He kept it dry until all of you were across just as he did the Red Sea. Uh, dried it up until we had all crossed over. He did this so that the nations of the earth might know the power of God and that you might fear the Lord forever. These is why, that is why these rocks were put here as a memorial of faith, a memorial of the supernatural work at place in a place that seemed impossible. These stones were a memorial that reminded them where man couldn't. God could. Memorial that reminded them that they had passed from death to life. From a hope perceived to a hope received. From talking about milk and honey to drinking and eating milk and honey. The stone served as a And I believe in life that we also have our set of stones. Things that remind us of where we've been and what we've been through. Amen. Amen. We have our memories of good and bad events, but some of us have even deeper stones. We have scars from where we've been hurt. We have the scars not only physically, but scars on our heart where those have turned their backs on us where we trusted God and God did not give us what we always wanted. We have scars. We have our own set of stones. And I found out through life that stones remind us. Stones do a good job of reminding us of four things. Amen. Four things. I want to give them to you quickly. Watch this. First thing that stones do is they remind us of our past predicament. Recall where the children of Israel, uh, the Israelites were before this. Remember, in the beginning of biblical times, they had already been in slavery for 430 years. 
And remember, after enduring the hands of Pharaoh, they finally get one named Moses who comes and sets the captives free. But then uh, the Israelites get into a place where they could not trust God for who God was. They had some doubting moments in their life. And God says this, because you're not ready to fully go into the promised land, I'm going to hold back my promise and keep you in the wilderness for an extra 40 years. You remember the children of Israel's plight. You remember that as they were enduring slavery, as they were coming out, making their way to the promised land, they lost people along the way. People were being disobedient, dying left and right. They faced famine. They were in a bad predicament. They, things did not look good for them. Things were not on the up and up for them. And then I thought, it, thought about it in life. We've also been in those places where things did not look good. Where it seemed as if we would not make it. It seemed as if we didn't have everything we need. We seemed, it seemed as if things were not on the up and up. I may not be talking to anybody, but I know for myself everything has not always been peaches and cream. I know. I know some of y'all looking whole. I know some of y'all ain't had nan problem in your life, but I wish I could tell, but I've come to realize that I was in a bad place before in the church. Just like the children of Israel, I wasn't always holy. Didn't always have it together. And so these stones remind me of where I've been. Can I, be, can, I, can I be transparent? Sometimes I think the issue with the church and church people is that sometimes we forget where we were. And because we've forgotten where we were, we can't help those who are currently going through the place that we've been. But I'm glad I got some scars. I'm glad I got some notices. I'm glad I got some notes that remind me every now and then you were struggling with something. You were going with something. Now, don't stick your nose up in the air talking about you too good to help somebody else who's going through the same All right. stuff. Stone right. right. reminds us that the, the past was not always pretty. Some of us had to scrape up just to get some pork and beans for dinner for our families. Some of us have been there and done that and when we see the stones, we're reminded where we've been. Watch this. We're reminded of where we've been. It points to the fact that God has brought us somewhere else. And so when I see the stones, I thank God that I'm not where God wants me to be. I realize that. But I also realize I'm not where I used to be. And this is what I found out secondly. When I see the stones, they remind me that even in my mess, even in my good times throughout the totality of my life, God's presence was always there. And I say that to say this, when you think about your past predicament, is there anybody wondering how in the world did I ever get out of that past predicament? Anybody wonder how did I make it? How did I survive? Why am I standing here? I've been through too much hell, had too much adversity, been through too much high, too many high, too much high water. Anybody ever wondered in the nighttime how in the world did I survive? And I share with you, you survived because even though things did not look good, God's presence was always on your life. That's why, that's why we are recipients of mercy. You remember what mercy is. Mercy says, I really don't deserve it, but God did it anyhow. And I don't know about you, but I stand gladly and raise my hand and say, thank you, God, for mercy. Because I should have been dead and cut off a long time ago. But God, you kept me anyhow. And I thank you. Thank you for mercy. The stones reminded Joshua that even when the Israelites were in the wilderness, God was still there. And does not the text in Exodus point to that? He was telling the children of Israel that when you are leaving, I'll be a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Then say you were not going to have any hard times 
but I will be there. And I found out the reason that my past predicament did not kill me because God was still covering me. Then I found out something else interesting about God. God is not a mediocre God. But oftentimes, God's timing is not our timing. And God likes to take things an extra step. He says in the text, watch this. Not only is my presence with you, but at the right time, I'm going to show you a power. Y'all got that? Y'all got the other had a, had a friend, y'all. Might tell y'all about my earlier days. Y'all ever had a friend who, you know, you stayed in a lot of trouble? Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't never been there. Y'all ain't never had no fights in the neighborhood. Amen. You, oh Lord, I'm telling too many stories about myself. Amen. But you, you, you ever had a friend that was with you? That was cool. That, that, that was cool. They, they were with me when I was getting in some trouble. They, they were with me. They, they were, they were by my side. But then there was some, some, some other friends who, when you got into the mess, not only were they with you, but they jumped into the mess with y- y'all. Ain't praying with me. I, I, I serve a God who, who's not only satisfied with his presence being with me, but when I get in some trouble, when God gets ready, he'll jump in with y- y'all. ain't playing with me. I, I got to go to the Bible. And you remember, you, re, you remember who was it? Who was it? Three, three Hebrew boys. Y'all, 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 y'all remember them. Y'all remember them correctly. Three Hebrew boys who, who said, look here, king, I don't care what you do. Don't care what decree you give. Don't care what rule you make. We will not. Bow down and serve your God. King says, that's all right. Then you got to go to the furnace filled with fire. Three people will say, you know what? We'll go to the furnace filled with fire. And you, our God is able to deliver us. Even if he doesn't, we still rejoice in the fact that he was able. Do you remember the story? They went to the furnace and then they stayed there all night. And then they came back to the furnace. The God says, something's wrong here. All right. All right. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. Yesterday we put three men in the furnace and I see a figure walking around and the figure does not look right. It look, we didn't put the figure in there and I come back here to tell somebody not only will God be with you, but God will get into the fire with you. Can I prove it in the text? Can I prove it in the text? God tells Joshua, let these stones remind you that on this day, you all walk through water. Some scholars would say the Jordan is not that deep. I beg to differ. You just don't know how big my God is. Look at the text. He says, I'm not going to take you around the obstacle. I'm not going to take you over the obstacle. But I got enough power that I'm able to take you through. Through the obstacle. And I come to help somebody today. The only way that you'll reach your destiny, reach your promised land, you can't go around all your problems, can't go over them, can't hide from it every now and again. You got to go through. And when you go through, you got to trust that it's not your own power that's taking you through. But God said, Paul said, but we have this treasure, oh my God, in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may not be of us, but it is of God. I've come to help somebody to tell you that the power of God will take you through. That's why when you go back and look at the doctor bills, the diagnosis from the doctor, you go back and look at the bank account the times when you were in the red. Go back and look at how your enemies had planned all against you, had built up plans against you. When you go back and you realize, my, 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 it was not by my own power because you realize the insufficiency of your own self because you couldn't have fought the battles all by yourself. And then you can stand with Brother Paul Davis and say, have you any rivers? Uh-huh. Yes, Lord, that you seem, that seem uncrossable. Have you any mountains that you can't tunnel through? I'm glad to let somebody know that God specializes in things that seem impossible and God will do what no other power, not my mama, not my dad, with no other power not my bank account not my status what no other power can do
Watch this. Not only is God manifesting his power, God's power in his life for you, but he asks a tag. He, asks a tag. he says, because there's some other folk that need to see what I can do. And you know what I've learned in life? I learned that sometimes my hell, sometimes my headache, and not necessarily being against me because there were some folk around me that were doubting God and God had to pick me because God thought I could handle it to show the people that were doubting him there is something about the name of Jesus. Y'all they praying with me. Some of the stuff you go through is not necessarily for you but it's somebody around you who needs to see what God is able to do through you and because if they see it through you then they might come to believe that our God is awesome he can move mountains he can heal diseases then lastly when we look at the stones not only do they remind us of the past predicament not only do they remind us of God's presence not only do they remind us of the power of God in our lives but lastly they remind us that life must keep going. Yeah. Yeah. The text says these stones will be here after you've overcome your adversity. Mm. Watch this. They will be here so long that your babies will come back to this place one day. And they would ask the question, what do these stones mean? Did y'all get that? God is saying, don't worry about your future in the stone. When he says, when he says, set up these stones, what he was saying, he's declaring, is that you're going to make it. Go ahead and start making plans for the future. This, this adversity, this obstacle won't take you out, but you're going to make it. You're going to make it so much that that your, your children and your children's children, your, your children's children's children, your, your children's 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 children, they're going to come back to the Jordan River and see what God has done. And I came by here to tell somebody, I know you've been through some mess. I know it's been hard sometimes. I know you've been up against the wall sometimes. But can I tell you something? Don't try to hide your scars. Amen. For your scars, when they heal, they're a reminder that if God brought me through something before, if I keep on living God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I ask of him y'all ain't catching me I need to help somebody out y'all if you living you gonna go through some more hell amen you gonna have some more Jordan rivers to cross amen but can I help somebody else if you remember the stones amen you remember that with God nothing is impossible amen you remember that if I hold to God's unchanging hand God will bring me out I need some help in here. You'll remember that if I trust in the Lord with all my heart, lean not to my own understanding that the steps of a good man are ordered. I need some help. You'll believe that when I give the Lord everything I've got, God will make a way. So you know what? I'm not worried about my trouble. Not worried about my tribulations because I got some scars that say if God did it back then, God can. God can. God can, God can, do it again, say yeah, say yeah, high five your neighbor and say yeah. Everybody on your feet. Be thankful for your scars. Be thankful for your stones. Because they do a good job of reminding you that the God you serve is powerful beyond measure. The reminder of the stones should push us, push us further to trusting in God with everything we have. And can I be honest? For a long time, I was going to church. I was pastoring a church. But I still had some doubts about what God can do. Can I be honest with you? 
And so because I've been there, I know what it's like to hear preachers say all this good stuff and still struggle because the preacher don't know my reality. And can I share with you, you're right, I don't know your reality. But I know for myself, I'm a living witness that God is bigger than your reality. And so there's nothing God can do. And the very fact that he brought you this far. The very fact that you're standing today is a testimony that God can do miraculous things. You be honest, half of us shouldn't be here. Some situation that really should have taken us out. And we got the scars to prove it. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. For the reminder of the stones. For the precious memories. Most of all, I think is a blessing. That through the biblical text, Christ showed us his scars. And his scars were essential to our eternal life. You remember Thomas? Thomas said, I won't believe it unless I see it. Christ come down. He says, look at the nails. The nail prints in my hands. These are my scars. Saying I've conquered death. Because I've conquered death. You have life eternal. 